In this video, I want to show you two different methods for using a tank style gas fired water heater to power a hydronic heating system. So that's hot water heating, either an in floor system like you see here or uh, a radiator system. So this is the tank style heater. One of the advantages of this approach as opposed to a boiler is that you've automatically got a feed for domestic hot water at taps and fixtures and things. So this line here, we've got the cold water coming into the tank. And then up here, we have the hot water going out to the taps and fixtures. This is a heat trap here. This is just a 290 degree bends. And the purpose of that is to stop the hot water from, from conducting all the way up and, and getting wasted by radiating out of the hot water pipe. So this stops the conduction from going on, so it saves a little bit of energy. We've got an expansion tank here because when the cold water goes in, it's going to expand as it gets hot. And in many situations, you need a, a tank. There's a, a membrane in here and there's air in part of it. So it can take the expansion, what's going on. So this approach, this side here, the domestic side is common to the two systems I'm going to be showing you and it's what happens on the other side of the tank that really matters. So here in this simple system we have the hot water coming off the tank. In this particular case the tank has two sets of, of heat taps or heat outlets. Um, so the hot water comes off here and it goes around and it goes through the hydronic heating system and then back into the tank for warming. Now all of this happens when the thermostat calls for heat. So the thermostat detects that the room is too cold and it delivers, it triggers this circulator pump here which starts the flow of water. You'll notice that the circulator pump is installed in a fairly low part of the system. This saves a lot of trouble because it means you're far less likely to have that pump um, prevented from working by an airlock. I mean, there's lots of water down here, and that pump is going to, to pump that water fine. So um, the thermostat calls for heat, turns on the circulator pump, circulates hot water through the system until the room is warm, and then the thermostat shuts off the pump. So cooler water is returning to the tank, and the tank has its own aquastat inside, so it will, it will fire up and keep the water in this tank hot as needed in a kind of a separate loop than what's happening here in the room. Now, the, the simple system uh, is good, but it can't be used in all jurisdictions because of a potential problem. And that problem has to do with the fact that in the off season, the water that's in the heating side of the system is going to just sit there. And it's possible that microbes could grow in there because the water is not circulating. It's sitting there for months on end. And some jurisdictions do not allow that. So there are ways around the problem. And that's what I want to show you here. One way around the stagnation problem is to wire in a timer, like you see here. Now, um, this will activate the circulator pump whether heat is called for or not, for about 10 minutes each day. And that serves to, to move the water through the hydronic system long before it would ever get stagnant. So in the summer, when things aren't working, you're still going to have that circulator pump kick in, and for about 10 minutes the water will circulate through. It's actually good for the pump for it to run regularly like that, even in the off season. And some jurisdictions will say, yep, that's okay. And this simple system, as I call it, is, is what you can use in places like that. Now, uh, a more complicated system that eliminates the need for a timer and any possibility of stagnant water is also a possibility. And it does have um, some efficiency and performance gains possible as well. So that's what I'm going to show you next, the, the more complicated heat exchanger system. Here's the second system, I call it the exchanger system, and you'll see it's got the same tank style water heater, uh, the, the cold water, municipal water supply coming in, the hot 
domestic supply coming out. So it, it handles everything you need in the house. The same expansion tank here. But the difference is what happens on this side. The hydronic heating water never mixes with the water in the tank. And, and the way that happens is through this heat exchanger here. So what happens when the thermostat calls for heat, or here, the thermostat triggers two pumps, two circulator pumps instead of one. It triggers the circulator pump here, which circulates the, the hot water off the top of the tank down through the one side of this heat exchanger and then back into the tank at the bottom. Now the, secu the second circulator pump is also triggered and it circulates the hydronic heating water through however the water heat is radiated in the house, back through and on the other side of the heat exchanger. Now a, a typical uh, heat exchanger like this, uh, a flat plate style works really well, uh, three by eight inches with about 20 plates. I find that sufficient for most houses where I live in a fairly cold part of Canada. So the hot water from the tank heats this side of the exchanger and the water from the heating system picks up that heat from the other side of the heat exchanger. You'll notice that the, the cooler water enters here and the flow of water runs opposite to the flow through the other side of the exchanger. That's the way you get the most heat exchange from this arrangement. So why would anybody want to do this? Well, if, if you're not allowed to have domestic hot water and heating water mix, then this is the system for you. There's another advantage too, and it has to do with the operating pressure of the heating system. Now typically, the, the optimal pressure is anywhere from 15 to 30 PSI. So that's pressure of the hydronic system. And that's measured with a gauge here. And you can monitor that. If you have a system that's directly connected to the water tank, as in the simple system I showed you before, then you're looking at anywhere from maybe 40 to 60 PSI. That's, you know, mun typical municipal water pressure. And that's somewhat higher than it should be for maximum pump life and functioning. It's not a big deal. It's what I would consider a minor advantage to the heat exchanger system. But uh, this, is what, this is what you need to do if you can't have any exchange of the two sorts of water. So if a system like this with a tank style water heater is such a good way to power a hydronic heating system, how come everyone doesn't use it? Why are there such a thing as boilers instead of hot water tanks? Well, first of all, the tank needs to be up to the job. Uh, it needs to have enough heat output. The tank I've installed at my own place has 150,000 BTU per hour input. So that's plenty for heating needs as well as domestic hot water. Most standard tank style water heaters won't produce that much. Um, and depending on where you live, you can and, and the size of your house and how well it's insulated, you can get away with less than that. Um, but the heater also has to be able to put out heat um, more consistently. It, it's going to have a far shorter rest period when it's used as a as a space heating engine, like this is here. So you need to have a water heater that's up to the job, and the manufacturer can tell you that. I mean, some companies will not warrant their tank style heaters. For this application and others will. Um, the unit that I'm using is called the Polaris and it's made by a North American company called A.O. Smith and they specifically build this tank style water heater for this application. That's one reason they put on uh, two pairs of, uh, of, of taps here. We have the, the cold and the hot for your domestic, your domestic side and then they return and the outflow here on the side of the tank for your hydronic heating system. Now, uh, another reason you'd want to use a tank style heater is because it's just simpler. You've got one appliance and it'll serve you all year round for domestic hot water, tapping in as needed during the heating season 
for heating. So it's a, it's a simpler system. And if you go with the simple installation and you eliminate the, the need for a heat exchanger, maintenance is also lower too, because with any kind of a boiler, you've got a built-in heat exchanger of one sort or another. And that heat exchanger will form scale and things on the domestic side of the system. So you'll have to flush some vinegar through that heat exchanger every so often, maybe every six months or a year or two years, depending on the hardness of the water. You can sidestep that maintenance with a tank style heater. The only maintenance that a tank style heater requires is to flush any sediment out from the bottom of the tank, which is quite an easy thing. You flip a valve after you've hooked up a hose to the tank and the sediment fl flushes out. Now, if you do have a separate heat exchanger like this, you are gonna have to do the vinegar treatment and that's why I've, I've, I've installed these, these flush valves here. That's something you're gonna wanna do. So you can shut off the flow valve, open up these ports here and you can flush some vinegar through there with a pump. Usually that only has to happen on the domestic side of the system, not the hydronic side, which doesn't build up minerals the same way. Um, but as I said, you can completely eliminate this altogether if you go with a simpler non-exchanger installation. So just to recap, uh, some of the reasons why you'd want to use a tank style heater. Um, first of all, they're simple. Uh, it's, uh, it's a technology that's been around a long time. Um, it's a simple concept and it works well. Another thing is versatility. Any tank style heater is going to do a good job for you, both space heating and for dom domestic hot water. Um, it's efficient too. The uh, Polaris unit that I've installed has a 95% a efficiency for both legs, both the space heating and domestic hot water. And in some applications, it's an especially low maintenance option as well. So there you have it.